Now, music has been written and played using the circle of fifths for centuries. Bach's well-tempered clavier was the first and very successful attempt to get the whole equal temperament thing sorted out so you could play in all 24 keys on one instrument without adjustment. So we had this. Although without the pedal, because that didn't exist for another hundred years. Now, that equal temperament and the circle of fifths has also enabled me to make some study aids to help people out with finding things like chords and finding scales and that sort of thing. Now, everything that you see here on the music stand, including this blue and orange one, which I'm going to demonstrate first, I've scanned them all into my computer. So if you go on to my Facebook page, Dan Baker, musician, and give me your email address, I will email you the scans and you can sit there and you can cut out one wheel with respect to the other and make your own. Now, one of the reasons why this is a good thing is because when you make these things, just making, just the tactile nature of making something gets you used to working with music and working with the theory of, of it. Now, the theory is a word that lots of people go, and shy away from. And yeah, I get it. My theory, you know, I'm fluent with my music theory, but it's about this. More than anything else. The maths is great, and I'm, I am fascinated by the maths of music, which is one reason why I've made these things. But it's all about your ear. If your ear says it's okay, it is. But we don't want to make things too complicated because music is meant to be an art form, it's meant to be entertainment, it's meant to be something that the listener can grab hold of. Now, I've got, first of all, a chord finder here. Now, I've got this one wheel that rotates with respect to the backing. So at the top here, we've got C, E, and G, and then the little word major written there. And that tells me what a C major chord is, which is C, E, G. That's fine. Now, that chord shows three notes. The order of the notes isn't important. I could have the E first, and then the G, and then the C to finish. Or the C once again, but with the G thumb. So there's your first bar of that well-tempered clavier movement in C major. Now, if we move around, we get the minor chord of C this time. C, E, flat and G. And that's fine. So you gradually, you can find out the notes in any of your chord types. I've got major, minor, dominant seventh, minor seventh, major seventh, minor major seventh, minor seven flat and fifth. Okay, so quite a few chord types are catered for there. There's a bit of a blank space here because mostly what I've done with this is for the majors and the minors and then all of the chords of the seventh. So this is a, something for rock and pop people, maybe some jazz band players as well, so you can find your chords. And you can find them in any key by just finding the initial letter on the outside of your circle. So if I want G sharp minor 7, I'll go around here. G sharp B, D sharp and F sharp. Now, notice that you can have two different keys that are the same. They're what's known as enharmonic. But things like A flat minor becomes a bit of an issue because you get things like C flat. So G sharp minor 7 and A flat minor 7 are the same. Just something to get used to. But what you usually find with minor keys in the sort of classical sense is that they tend to be sharps rather than flats. You'd have G sharp minor, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, and then the majors will be flats instead. E flat major, A flat major, that sort of thing. But you need to be aware of those of the connection between them. So for three of the keys down here, I've done my what's known as N harmonic equivalents. So that's how you find any of your chords in any of your keys. So that just sits on your music stand. And what I've done is I've fixed it with a, um, a, a bolt, a little sort of yeah, a little uh, lock bolt there, and a, and a nut. And then I've got here a three-quarter inch tap washer which enables me to move the thing around without getting the thing grubby. Now, the next one, 
I've already demonstrated this one, and some of you indeed have downloaded this and made your own copies, and I hope that worked out. The problem with this is you've got to have the two things exactly the same size on your printer so that you can print them out with them and they'll line up. So this one shows this time your chords, but the associated scale that you can use to improvise over it. So a major chord of C. The root is at the top, shown at the top with these two, um, with the, the yellow window showing two C's with a little double dash there. That means you've got it lined up. So you've got C, E, G, and C, which is your C major chord. And then you can improvise using the major scale. Fine. Sounds perhaps a little bit, doesn't, wouldn't work over a rock and pop thing. Mm really. Might do, but it sounds a little bit sort of stayed at the moment. Let's move round though. Now what I've got, I've moved the both bits of the circle round to demonstrate how the modes are related. Now modes predate major scales, but they are used in jazz, blues, you know, modern music. We've got G7 here, which is G, B, D and F. Then we have the scale of Mixolydian on G that works over that. It's exactly the same scale as C major. It has the same notes in it, just starts in a different place. Once again, if I go round, I get D minor 7. With the Dorian on D to accompany it. Then I go round again. I've got A minor 7 this time. With the Aeolian on A to go with it, or the natural minor. Then I go around to the Phrygian mode this time, and this time it's on E. This, these are all in the key of C major because I've held two, the two circles together and you can still see a C major around here. So all the modes, which are basically shown across half of this circle, they're all related to each other. So E7 flat 9, or if I kept the flat 9 in my left hand, imagined my bass. something that's a bit more dreamy. And then we've got the Locrian mode, which works over a half diminished or a minor seven flat five. So in B, that would be this. Same scale as C major, but it has a very different usage. And you have a few other things besides an altered chord, seven chord, minus, you know, minus seven chord with a blues scale this time. You know, and you just set your key. I don't know. Let's, let's say I want to know what the, the blues scale on F is. That's, there we go. There's F blues scale. There's your F minus seven chord and the blues scale to go with it. different genre, etc, etc. There's that one. Now, for the classical fraternity, we need to make sure that we can get somebody who's been playing violin for 40 years in an orchestral setting or a solo setting and is called to do a studio session think, oh no, I'm really scared, oh, but I can't improvise. The number of, people, a number of orchestral players I know who can't improvise or they've never done it and I you know, it's, it's something that um, I'm hoping can be undone with this. Now, this is the final one before I show you the ridiculous one that I made, which has not, it's useful in some ways, but this is much more useful. Now, what I've done here is a very similar thing to the other study aids that I've done. They're all sort of, you know, clock face, all based on bits of card that slide with respect to each other. So let's set C as our root. You can see that at the top of your screen, C, the root. And then all the other chord types that you can get, things like C7 or C minor seven or whatever, C7 flat nine, C half diminished, which is shown as minor seven flat five there. You can suddenly improvise over these things if you know your key signatures. Now, all classical musicians will know their key signatures inside out because they've been doing it 
since day one. Now, let's just take C minor seven as an example. There's your C minor seven chord. And this time you can use a scale of B flat major. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record on this. This is the disc clavier by Yamaha, so I can record my performances. I'm going to record something in C minor, and then I can show you how this works with a violin. So just a groove on C minor seven. Now with the modes here, I can use B flat major or Dorian on C. Now lots of the classical fraternity will know about the modes because the modes predate the current major scale, the sort of you know the diatonic major that we all know. However, if you now stay well playing B flat major, things are very different. So I'll just grab a violin and then play this back off the piano. So what I was doing there was just playing a B flat major arpeggio. That B flat major arpeggio works really well over that C minor seven because it's the key signature. Now the reason I pick arpeggios is because going up and down a scale can sound really formulaic and boring. You know, if I'm just going. Cool. Took me a while to get my B flat major scale. Oh dear, oh dear. But if I just go up and down that scale, it just says, yes, I can play the major scale in B flat or whatnot. Um, but if you play arpeggios or skip a note, if I did this, of course, I had an E natural there, but if I did an e, e flat, so it fits over my C minor. I'm missing one note of your scale. So, so if I go back to the beginning. Suddenly you've got something that sounds neither like a scale or an arpeggio really. I mean, it's got some sort of direction, but you could do this. It's all B flat major. So that's the reason that this sort of thing works. Now, if I, I don't know, let's say I want, um, um, let's have a look at the, the major seven. If this was E flat major seven now, you have something like this. That's your chord. And then if you want to play over on the violin, you've got the same key as I had for C minor. All I've done is just used my B flat major scale again with this. So that's a bit of the improvising on, um, you know, on an orchestral instrument. Lastly, we have this. Now this thing here, the Cordosaurus Rex. I just made this because I thought, oh, I wonder if I can make something that can show all the scale. You know, it's always in my bag when I go out teaching or whatever. But lots of pupils when they when I take this thing and put it on the music stand, they sort of look slightly bewildered, and rightly so, because this is just, it's just a sort of mathematical exercise, necessarily than, uh, than necessarily something that will help. But I mean, I mean, for example, yeah, we've got um, here, we've got G, the chord of G7 altered with the scale that goes with it. 
I mean, G7 alt is this. And that's the scale that goes, goes over it. So it's not exactly mainstream. However, if you want to know those sort of things, then yes, perhaps go on the internet and have a have a look at that. This is an A3 size. In fact, it fits it fits in a record sleeve. It is a 12 inch disc, so it's bigger than a sheet of A4 in width terms. So I can't scan this one in. But trust me, don't really want this one because it is about your ears. It's about thinking how you can make something out of more basic building materials, more basic music materials. And there we go. There is a sort of a little exploration into how those study aids work. Now, they are all available. I've got the scans for these. So if you would like one of these, then please just email me. Uh, just give me your email address on my Facebook page, Dan Baker Musician. And of course, share these videos far and wide.